Hi everyone, Barkthony Bark Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Pup album, The Unraveling of Pup the Band. This is the newest full-length LP from Toronto punk outfit Pup. Since their 2014 debut, the band has quickly grown to be one of the most beloved groups on the poppier side of the genre, consistently delivering catchy and melodic tunes with a serious rawness and ferocity to them. I thought their first couple of records were a little derivative, yes, but they did kind of come into their own on the songwriting side, at least on their last full-length LP, which was just so insanely catchy, really their best crop of tracks to date. But the unraveling of Pup the Band seeks to be more than just a bunch of good songs. Conceptual, thematic, and fed up, this record shows the band in sort of a tragic place right now. Having an artistic existential crisis that sees them mentally exhausted, maybe even disillusioned and hollowed out by the music industry, which basically leads to Pup being portrayed as a corporation or some corrupt political hierarchy, like in the case of the Four Chords Part 2 interview and the band does what it can to give this narrative a very grand and chaotic presentation with more anthemic choruses, huge group vocal layers, uh, bits of keys and noise, which ends up making this record sound like something more akin to a Jeff Rosenstock LP or an AJJ album. Even the piano-led opener on this thing sounds like Connor Oberst having an emotional breakdown with all of these woe-is-me lyrics. So in a way that does kind of make this LP sound less distinct than their last did, and um, I'm not crazy about that. Given the quality of the last album, I was kind of hoping that Pup would be able to break the seal into something a bit more specific to them this time around. Still, despite this part of me does admire the more conceptual angle of this LP, there is quite a bit of ambition going on with this record in that regard, and it does lead to some pretty creative song concepts and ideas, like Robot Writes a Love Song, for example, which does fit into the album's grander meta-commentary as like a reflection on the love song formula, but but it also works as a literal tale of two robots in love, with a lot of humor and tragic narrative twists packed into the lyrics. A lot of catchy guitar work, too. Then Matilda sounds like it's being sung from the perspective of a guitar with abandonment issues. You don't even play me anymore, you don't even write down the chords. The track also becomes a commentary on the way Pup has progressed as a group too, as the guitar is reflecting on being left behind in a way in the artistic process and being in a band and making music and making art has become work that is now not working out. I'm pretty sure this record also brings some of the loudest mixes on any Pup record ever too, cause shit, there are points where this record is either maxed out or sonically just a little suffocating. The song Waiting, for example, may be just a uh, Pup's loudest yet. The heavy guitar and bass layers on this one are just crushing. The intro track I was mentioning earlier, the second half of that bursts into this searing wall of tones that uh, tingle and sparkle with <laughs> So much distortion, it feels like pins and needles, sugar-coated pins and needles, are slowly uh, entering my eardrums. Past the intro, there's also the song Totally Fine, which is packed with all these growling riffs, shots of feedback, and noise punk guitars. It's kind of surprising a catchy tune translates out of it all. The super neurotic lyrics on the track hit pretty hard as well, and speak to a general sense of dread that kind of seeps into every moment on this LP. So yes, while the very intensely full sound of this record does hit incredibly hard at first, it does wear its welcome out after a bit. It's just like a hot bath that grows colder and colder and really results in an overall lack of dynamics in some pockets and less than ideal mix choices too, such as the vocals being noticeably more buried on Relentless as well as Grim Reaping. There's also a lack of balance between the pounding drums, guitars, harmonious vocal layers, as well as skittering sequenced beats on the song Habits, which just ends up leaving the song sound sounding sort of sloppy and blown out. Similar subtleties are lost, I think, in the blaring presentation of the song Cutting Off the Corners too. All these tracks kind of culminate into a final leg of the record that is much weaker than the start of it, but I will say the narrative of the album overall does come to a head pretty well with the closer, cleverly titled Pup the Band Inc. is filing for bankruptcy, where you could say Pup here is very much raging against the dying light in a way, with economic pressures, social pressures, a 
moderate amount of success and even age staring the band blankly in the face and forcing them to come to terms with a lot of stuff. That they are professionals now, that uh, the fact they have been at what they're doing for so long, it kind of puts them out of step with many people in their own age group. And as far as future projecting goes, so you can, you know, uh, safely move through your life knowing that uh, you'll have a place to stay or uh, a reason to live and exist at the end of the day, like how long does being in a successful punk band really last? Narratively, the track ends up being essentially a cliffhanger moment where I guess we just have to kind of sit here and wait and see what exactly is next for Pup. The whole thing does end with an interesting moment of clarity, though. There's no place I'd rather be set, even though everybody here is fucked in the head. I'm truly grateful for the life that I've led. I'm just being dramatic and falling upwards again. I might pull it off if I don't fuck this up before it pays off. And part of me does find the self-awareness in this moment of the LP assuring, but I feel like these lines do also get to the heart of another slight issue I have with the record overall. And yeah, it is being, in, in some respects, a tad too dramatic, I think. I mean, this isn't an outright invalidation, and of course we are all entitled to our existential crises. But again, over the past five years, Pup has become one of the more beloved punk bands out there uh, on the scene internationally. Obviously, they're not doing MGK numbers, but they do have hundreds of thousands of people streaming them every month. And on top of that, they have a gigantic tour uh, set up behind this record, which will no doubt be pretty well attended. And again, not to say that that invalidates any feelings the band has on itself as a band, but uh, from somebody looking at it from the outside, I have a hard time imagining like what can Pup really do to fuck this up, per se, outside of possibly put themselves in a place where they're a bit too much in their own heads, you know, which uh, I think is kind of the case on this project. I'm feeling a decent too strong six on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, pup forever.